everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm sitting down with the cast from 68 Whiskey. The Paramount Network Dark Comedy follows a group of army medics stationed in Afghanistan who rely on their camaraderie to survive a stressful environment. Joining me to talk about the show are stars Sam Keeley, Christina Rotlo, and Jeremy Tardy. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you nice for having me here. I have to say, I really enjoyed this show. Dark comedies are quickly becoming my kind of favorite genre because it really gives you everything that you kind of want. And I love that this show tackles such serious topics for so many people. But, you know, there's those comic relief moments and you kind of get to know what life can be like for some of these soldiers during their downtime and the fun stuff they do. So what was attractive to you guys about this project? I'll start with, with you, Sam. Yeah, like everything you said, you know, it's um, it's, a, it's an interesting script in a way that it it feels very much like real life, you know, and um, like in so many situations that we deal with in, in all of our lives that are that are very serious, there's always levity that creeps in there and, and somehow is able to relieve the tension. And I feel like we're dealing with quite heavy subject matter that, that men and women go through on a daily basis. So to um, to get the gallows humor just right was was attracted me. I thought it was it was cha a challenge in a new way and I loved it. Yeah. What about for you guys? What was interesting about playing the, the role of these army medics for you? Well, for me, the main thing was that my character, Rosa, she's a, she's a dreamer. So she goes to Afghanistan to fight for her country, which is the United States. And while she's out there, she finds out that her family is being deported and they want to deport her as well. So for me, being Mexican, it was really important to tell that story and to have the other side of the story. So that was like the main thing for me. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was really a culmination of the characters. I thought that the characters were really well written and unique and complex. And you get to play a soldier. You also get to play a medic. You get to use the weapons. You get to save lives. So to me, as an actor, it just felt like a great opportunity or something that I've always dreamed to be able to do. Yeah. But along with that, the writing. I was in love with the writing early on. I thought that it was very interesting and authentic to tell the stories of these soldiers in ways that weren't necessarily romanticizing or creating them as these perfect heroes. Because in reality, we deal with a lot of soldiers who are out there, service members who are doing these jobs, and they have difficult jobs to do, but they also have lives. People are flawed, and I think that that's what's so interesting to me, is that we get to play flawed people that make mistakes, that are good people, but they don't always do great things. When it comes to storytelling, you have two of the, kind of the best executive, executive producers ever, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer. So was that also an extra draw, knowing that it was coming from this production company and just sort of the, yeah. the level, the standard that they kind of achieve all the time? Yeah, yeah, I think you said it right. Like, we knew that it was going to be great having those two amazing uh, producers, uh, Ron, director. I mean, it's, it was like a, a dream come true for the three of us, I guess. Were they on Everyone. set? No. 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 <laughs> I had to ask. Uh, first, yeah. let's talk about the name, too. 68 Whiskey. Who wants to de oh, describe that's, what that's Jeremy's. It's Jeremy's yeah. one, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 68 Whiskey is the code word, which is for the military occupational specialty of the combat medic. Mm -hmm. So in any branch of the military, you're going to have people who have different roles that they fill. And each role, if they're an infantryman, if they gas up the vehicle's fuel, if they're flying in the helicopter, they all have different code names. And it just so happens that for the combat medics, it's 68 Whiskey. I love that. Did you guys learn any other military lingo that you thought was extra interesting or fun to say? Uh, <laughs> yes. We have since forgotten those terms. <laughs> yeah. I was like, short answer, <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we learned it, you know, we were very fortunate. We had a lot of, um, you know, military kind of technical advisors on set, and including uh, Matt King needs a shout out, who is, our, who, is a, who is a 68 whiskey and um, served overseas. And he was there on hand whenever there was any kind of medical stuff that we had to do to make sure that we were absolutely above board on everything. So, um, yeah, we had all the lingo then, but, yeah, it's not, a, not exactly coming to me right now. No, not to me. <laughs> I relate to that. You can't retain all that information. I would imagine you guys are memorizing scripts and like, sometimes like a data dump. You're like, you got to learn it exactly. and then forget it. Um, let's talk about your characters. You play Sam. Or no, you are Sam. <laughs> I, play, I play Sam You play well Cooper. Yeah. Uh, you play I play Cooper. Cooper Roback. Yeah, he's a kid from California um, from a place called Hemet. And um, yeah, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's a healer in his own kind of way. He's running away from something in his own life that was quite traumatic. And he finds you know, a surrogate family, essentially, you know, in the military and with these guys. And, um, 
he goes out of his way to protect people and he bends the rules and has a disdain for authority. So that mix is is always an interesting cocktail and he gets himself into all kinds of trouble. Uh, and uh, I want to know what was your approach to his accent and sort of living in that accent because you play an American soldier and what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, I was very fortunate to um, to have played Americans before and I've had some great dialect coaches and um, uh, for me, it's staying in it, you know, and... Uh, you know, I would stay like I think Christina only heard my real accent like when we, we rapped. rapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, I would um, imagine. Yeah. yeah. You stayed in it the whole time you guys shot. Yeah, pretty much. Unless like unless we went out on the weekends. Well, we went out drinking a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Naturally, then, came then that would just be inappropriate <laughs> and strange. Um, but yeah, just staying in it because I feel like if I jump in and jump out, one syllable will slip, and then it's not about your performance anymore. It's waiting for the next time for you to slip up, and I didn't want that to be the case. So, yeah. And you play Rosa? I play, yeah, Alvarez Rosa. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you mentioned a little bit about her story, and, you know, having the immigration storyline is so personal for so many people, especially now. So uh, just take me through again kind of what you bring to that role and why it's important for you to make sure that this story is told in, in an authentic way. Well, I mean, it's uh, Alvarez. She she was born in Mexico, and then when she was two, three years old, she moved to to the states. So her country is the USA. You know, she doesn't know any other country. And I'm from Mexico. Um, I've always wanted to be an actress in the in Hollywood. So I came to to the U.S. when I was 18. And when I came here, it was um, a matter of you cannot be. Uh, you cannot play Latina because you don't look Latina enough. When I was 18, they were like they they were telling me that the whole time, mm -hmm. and you have an accent, so you cannot play American even though you look American. Uh, so to me, it's very important to tell those stories, to 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 communicate to to the world that we all came to this country to have a better life, to have a better life not only for us but for our families and for. For even for the country. I mean, look at Alvarez. She goes to, to the army to fight for her country, to make her country better. And when her country doesn't even look at her as a citizen, then she gets like, why, why am I here? Why am I fighting for a country who doesn't even see me as an American? So I think that's her story. That's, that's the story of many Americans. And so for me, that's why it was like, so I need to tell it and I need to do it right. And hopefully people get connected to Alvarez. And even though she's on the front lines, she has family who back home are getting detained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her whole family is being deported and then her um, her brother is being in a detention center because he tried to cross the border by himself to see his friends because he doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's very tough. Yeah, definitely. When I saw that storyline, I was like, I cannot imagine a more heart-wrenching conflict really, especially for these soldiers who love their country so much. And then when they're risking their yeah. lives, they're risking their lives for their country. And yeah. It's, it's, it's and it's not fiction. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like that stuff is happening yeah. every day and no one seems to be talking, talking about, about it. it enough. Yeah. It's nuts. It's really nuts. Uh, and you play Staff Sergeant Mackay Davis. Is that right? Affirmative. <laughs> 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 Tell us about him. Well, Mackay is from south side of chicago as the trailer uh, showed and he is a really good combat medic i mean he coming from the south side i happen to be from milwaukee and i have family in the south side of chicago i have family in the uh, chicago area and i've been down there did some research and it's not an easy place to live and so he would have seen a lot growing up he would have seen a lot of violence growing up he would have seen a lot of beauty growing up but because of his experience there something made him want to go overseas and fight for his country. Mm -hmm. And so much of what you see throughout the series with Davis is him struggling between the mission, saving lives over there, and then trying to help his family back home. It just so happens that his mom has cancer and she needs medical treatment, but they don't have the money to be able to do that. And so you see them scheming up plans throughout the series to try to hustle this money mm -hmm. so that he can send it back home. And so much of really what I think Roback and Davis are really going through is the conflict of trying to be a soldier, trying to follow the rules, trying to do it the right way. But the conflict of doing it the right way and not having the resources to actually survive, I think it calls to our attention 
how much the service members are being paid. I mean, they don't get paid that much. Mm -hmm. And so is that the incentive for people to get into the military, mm -hmm. become service members? Um, when, when you look at it that way, I think that's why you can't really see him as a bad guy for trying to just help his mother yep. so she can get medical treatment. There's so many things you can learn, like you just mentioned, that I've never thought about how much soldiers make. Um, what sort of research did you guys do or did they provide for you guys to sort of learn about what life is really like for these soldiers? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, we were very lucky. Like I said, um, we had so many members of our crew that actually have served. Mm. Um, and, you know, we had a wealth of knowledge around us all the time. So uh, that entailed a lot of just bugging people and asking a lot of questions and... Uh, <laughs> you know, trying to get inside their heads. And, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I was in the service and, you know, X, Y, and Z. But, I mean, it's a different thing when you're trying to portray characters who feel and, you know, feel real things. So it's always tricky to broach a subject of, like, well, what was going through your mind at that time? You know what I mean? Um, but we were fortunate enough to have that. I mean, we, we had so many people around us to draw on. So, we were, you know, it was great. Yeah, and even the writers, one of the writers, he's he served as well. Dylan. So, yeah. And in addition to that, I, I mean, there's so many books out there, and I think that a lot of people who are really interested in what soldiers experience should really check out some books. I did a lot of research reading specifically combat medics in Afghanistan and Iraq and what they experienced, firsthand knowledge. And my uncle was actually a sergeant in the Army, and uh, he was in Afghanistan in 2011, I think, D'Angelo Harris. Shout out, Sergeant Harris. <laughs> thank um, you for your service. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so I really got to pick his brain. And what's so great about him, and, and, and I appreciate his own coming to terms with everything that he experienced because he has a pretty good outlook on things. And, and there's a lot of trauma that comes with being over there. And so he shared with me different experiences that are very similar to the stuff that we do on the show. And so I love it that now he has a show and so many other service members have a show that they could watch that could be reflective to some extent of what they saw or experienced. And we have to talk about the physicality of your guys' roles because you are playing soldiers and obviously that's a very physically demanding role. Uh, you guys were to put on those uniforms every day and there's one scene in particular I saw of your character when he's like just taking everything off and he just looked so relieved yeah. to be out of it at the end of the day. Yes, uh, that's not you relate to, yeah, do you relate to that? <laughs> that's real. Yeah. No, it was, yeah, I mean like the, yeah, well, I mean we got a small taste. Our gear weighs around what, 40, 50 pounds? It's not nearly That's as it? heavy. Right. <laughs> it's, not, it's not nearly as heavy as these, you know, as the service men and women have to, you know, wear. Um, but yeah, like I mean, you know, the the training that's involved in all this stuff is is nuts, you know what I mean? Because you have to be physical as a soldier, you have to be fit, you have to be medically competent in that kind of training, you have to be trained with firearms, and then you got to do it all with a helmet, flak jacket, medical pack. All that stuff, you know what I mean? And then, you know, it's uh, so it's a lot. So, yeah, that scene in, in episode four where I strip off is uh, it's essentially me at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't that happy. No, she wasn't happy at all. Yeah, yeah she didn't was like, clean up your But shell. she did clean enjoy up. throwing the stuff at me. And like, <laughs> uh, what was it like for you two to put on that uniform every day and to take it off? Does it also affect your mindset when you put it all on? Oh my God, yeah. Like, me as a woman, I felt like a man every single day on set. Like, I couldn't wait to put on a skirt or to put on a, like, yeah. like this. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I was like, I, I, I would sit like this, like, the whole time. And yeah. it's normal because, I mean, that's how you want to sit, yeah. you know? And, um, and also for women in the military, I think, to get around, they should feel like a man because there's not too many women and they don't want to be, you know? So, um, so yeah, my, my whole body changed during those five months and um, yeah and then we were also carrying bodies so 50 pounds plus another 140 pounds running uh, up hills so running through mountains yeah. in 90 degree heat that was fun yeah. yeah did you guys get any sort of like basic training or we didn't do basic training although that's something that I would love to do yeah. If we really? Go into a You're going to volunteer two. for that? Uh, well, it won't be. It could never <laughs> be the same as the real deal, but it's an approximation to what the real service members would experience. They have programs around the country. Um, 
But I did some firearm training, California Tactical Academy. We worked with AR-15s, and that's very similar to the M4 military issue. So I got to work with guys who have been there, who know what it is to make sure that my feet placement are right or when I drop that I'm doing it pr properly. Um, it was really good. I mean, we, we, the training has been there, and I think that that, along with everything we have on set with the consultants, has really been to make sure that we get as authentic as possible. And um, I've, in some of the reviews I've read, a lot of people sort of like hint at MASH, just in sort of the tone of it, um, more looking at the social interaction of the, the soldiers and the comedic kind of relief that comes with the very serious issues you guys tackle. So what is the vibe like on set? Because you do have all these, I mean, the cast just like seems awesome. Everybody seems like really dynamic and young really and awesome fun. Cast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we got along so well. We became friends. We go out together. I mean, I know many castmates say that yeah but if, but if, i mean lying, though. <laughs> <laughs> this you guys is are telling true <laughs> no no like it's it's you know uh, not to say that there, there always has to be a bad egg in the situation but genuinely there's nobody on set you know what i mean everybody we got so lucky everybody's super talented everybody works really hard and we all want to make the best show possible and we just get on like a family yeah. it's great yeah the yeah. crew the crew is crew. incredible because not only do they work really long hours, but they're working out there in that heat too. Or in the cold in Santa Clarita, once that sun goes down, it drops like 20 degrees. And so they're out there putting their best foot forward, trying to make this the best show that they can make it. And I think that's really special that collectively we all felt that this isn't just another gig or another job, but this, this could be something special. And we're really trying to tell the story about these people. So we really want to make it good. Yeah. And I think everyone got that kind of that idea. Yeah, you want to do it right, especially given the sensitivity of sharing these stories, which are so important and so personal. We talked about the immigration storyline. Are there what are some other major sort of themes or issues that the show's gonna explore? There's domestic abuse in there. You know what I mean? There's um, people running from their families um, for whatever reason. Um, there's definitely the, the exploration of, like I said earlier, like a surrogate family. You know what I mean? And finding solace and peace and and sacrifice in, 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 in each other. And um, I mean, we're tackling a lot of stuff, especially in today's current political climate that people don't, like I say, don't really want to look in the face. And uh, I think that's really brave. I think it's brave of Roberto and, and all of our other writers that we have on the show. Um, and you know, we're dealing with it in a way where we're not beating you over the head with a political message, but we're just going like, we'll just leave that there yeah. and let you guys think about it, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, the other one, it's, um like one of the things that happens when you are abroad is that um, if you're married, then your family is no longer your family, like your main family, your husband or your wife or your kids, you never see them. So the family like this becomes your family. So for them, it's really weird when they have to go back and they don't feel, they just can't wait to go back yeah. to the other family, you know? So we touch that subject a lot, which is, which is great because we, Actually, with people don't usually think about that. Yeah, I, was say, I would never. You always see the the videos of the soldiers arriving back home and how happy they are. But of course, we know that soldiers have a hard time adjusting yeah. back to their previous lives. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's. I think that's something that we're starting to yeah. give enough tension to. Yeah. That more door, than that door closes and the cameras go away, and you know you're left with the people who know you better than anybody. Do you know what I mean? And then you have to try and like come back into the real world, which is. You know, I can't imagine what they go through, but I'd imagine it's no semblance of what we go through here. And, you know, I bet the culture shock is coming back. I don't think it's going there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what I've... I have family and friends who are in the military, and there's always that adjustment period. My aunt actually works to help re rehabilitate soldiers when they're acclim reacclimating, because that is oftentimes much harder mm -hmm. um, because of what they've been through. Yeah. Right. Uh, we do have some questions from the audience. Yeah. First one comes from Miranda. Um, I was just wondering what your favorite part about filming was. Uh, <laughs> probably this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This. Uh, yeah. This little family we have going. I, I had a I had a social media interview yesterday, and they asked me how do I feel now that the show is over, and um, you know how was my last day on set, and I found myself getting emotional as the answer went on, and I was like, I have to stop her. I'm gonna cry because it feels it feels strange that we're kind of yeah. breaking it up now, but yeah. the whole experience has just been incredible. You know. It's great. 
For me, it was getting along with, with Sam and Sam because if, if you're not with the right people, it's just not fun. And it was so easy to work with them. Uh, but along with that, they experienced gaining the skills of using a weapon on set and shooting live fire with blanks, being able to fly in a Black Hawk helicopter or Humvees, things that I wouldn't want to do because, <laughs> frankly, I got a lot of respect for the soldiers, but I only play one on TV. <laughs> That's why I said, I ain't no real soldier. Um, but getting that experience, being able to do that as an actor, that really gives me the kind of skills that help me do those things that I dream of being able to do as an actor. So I'm really grateful for that. I agree with both of you, so. <laughs> and Brie? Hi, um, so you all answered my question that I was gonna ask already, so I'm gonna ask a different question. So now that you guys have played soldiers and medics in there and you're saying that there's a lot of things that, topics that people are ignoring and not really wanting to discuss, but we're all feeling it. Everybody here feels what's really going on. And I'm wondering, do you ever walk around the streets of New York now and notice the homeless population here and have a different outtake and different look on them, knowing that a majority of them are actually veterans and they're suffering from complex PTSD, which nobody wants to discuss, and they really need tribe and family again, which is what the military is, which is why we see FDNY, NYPD, everyone coming together because they've been through traumatic experiences. And how is it that we can, or is there anything that you all want to do to actually start highlighting this and bring more community together and try and fix this? I don't know. I feel like there's just so much we can do. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a great question, great and question. it's a very wide answer. But um, I think for me especially, um, the only way art works is if it sends a message. If it doesn't send a, me a message, then what's the point of doing whatever you're going to do. So for me, this show has it. This show it has a message, and you're going to go home, and you're going to have a laugh, but then you're going to think about what you just saw. Uh, so that's, that's a way to do something. Uh, we, I live in L.A., he lives in L.A., and there is so many homeless. It's, it's, it's crazy, but it's, it's a huma humanity issue. We don't pay attention to one another. So that's the biggest issue. Once we start paying attention to what the other is suffering, even though it's not family, then things are going to change. And I mean, yes, I want to do so many things, you know, but um, I think it's a process. And, and I think the, the, the main, the first thing we all need to do is to acknowledge one another. Yeah. There's also a, a great spot that you'll see when you watch the show during the commercial breaks. We do say that these experiences that we're portraying are reflective of things that people actually experience. And so there's a website, our show's website, 68whiskey.org, and you could go there to learn more. There are so many organizations out there that people can donate to to help vets. The VA, uh, which needs help. I mean, the reality of, you know, and, I, and I, I'd love for Americans to stick to our word when we say support the troops. You know, there's the ideology of we support the troops no matter where they are. We support the troops no matter what they're doing. But when they come home, that's really how we can show our support for the troops. Not just saying thank you, but trying to make sure that these people, men and women, have the resources to get the health care that they need, to get housing or whatever programs that are going to help them, as you said your aunt works with, to readjust to being a civilian again. And I think we can go a lot further with that. And so I hope that in some way our show does push that forward. Can I just add as well, I think you've answered your own question. I think we live in a digital age where everybody is desensitized from the world and nobody really stands up and is emotional and says what's in their heart and on their lips. And so I think you're, by more people talking and more people addressing this situation, that's how we remedy it. Don't just look at your phone. Do you know what I mean? And just kind of go, oh, and there's a picture of a dog. Do you know what I mean? It's like it, people aren't talking about this issue. People are afraid to be uncomfortable. They're terrified to think about anything else except what their next meal is going to be sometimes. Do you know what I mean? So I think you're very brave to get up and uh, 
and highlight that. And, and we should just talk about this more and, and you know, actively go out of our way to do something. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, I mean, TV is in such an interesting place because it's hard to not have a show with an actual voice and message. You know, it feel, your show kind of has to say something in this time because everybody wants to be in the conversation and have collaboration. So the show definitely does that. Like I said, there's enough light moments and humor, but the things you guys do address are very serious and I think are going to connect to a lot of people in a really serious way. So thanks for the work you've done on the show. Congrats on it. Thank um, you. And if you guys want to check it out, 68 Whiskey airs Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Paramount. Network. Put your hands together for the cast. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us.